Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bitto. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 148 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Bitto. In 1887, a year after the organization's founding, the American Kennel Club had an interesting dog on its registry of purebreds. The dog's name was Me Too, and its listed breed was Mexican Hairless. Americans paid little attention to this type of dog until October 19, 1940, when a Mexican hairless dog named Chinito Jr. became an American Kennel Club champion. The owner of the 1940 champion dog, an eccentric New York socialite named Valetska Radke, must have wowed the AKC with her unusual canine, but the interest in this breed in the United States was either short-lived or non-existent. By 1959, the American Kennel Club dropped the Mexican hairless breed from its stud book because officials thought the dog to be extinct, or at least too rare to be of any consequence. While not entirely accurate, there was some truth to the idea of the scarcity of the Mexican hairless, known for centuries in Mexico as the Xolo Itzcuintli. From Spanish colonial times to the early 20th century, the dog became more difficult to find and only existed in remote areas in purebred form. Dating back well over 3,000 years, the Xolo Itzcuintli, or Xolo for short, had interbred with a wide variety of European dogs over the years, and many believed that this iconic Mexican animal would not last through the 20th century. Mexican painter Diego Rivera was a huge advocate of the Xolo and realized the importance of keeping this symbol of Mexico alive. Rivera went beyond just making the wider public aware of the dog through his paintings. In 1925, he started the first kennel to breed Xolos, handpicking the finest examples he could find to breed and thus continue the ancient bloodlines. The trajectory of this breed altered in the mid-1950s. Between 1954 and 1956, a small band of dog lovers vowed to rescue the Sholo from the brink of extinction. Headed by British Chihuahua expert Norman Pelham Wright and underwritten by a European countess, the Xoloitzcuintle expedition went to the Rio Balsas area of the Mexican state of Guerrero to collect specimens of the dogs. With ten canines, they began a serious breeding program. To reestablish Xolos as a recognized breed with the American Kennel Club, the Xoloitzcuintle Club of America organized itself in 1986. By January 2011, the Xolo was fully reinstated into the AKC and became eligible for competition in the non-sporting group. There are currently some 30,000 Xoloitzquintlis in the United States, and the unusual canine is now recognized as the national dog of Mexico. Not all Xolos are hairless. The ones classified as hairless often have whisker-like hairs growing on their heads, paws, or tails, but are generally smooth. The non-hairless Xoloitzquintlis look as sleek as their hairless counterparts and come with a shiny, close-fitting, and short coat. The hairless and the furred varieties can come from the same litter. The skin on the hairless Xolo is more like a hide, and requires maintenance with oils and lotions to keep it moist and to safeguard the dog from the sun. The colors of the dogs range from light brown to black, and the hairless variety gets darker with more sun exposure. Their bodies are usually lean and muscular, and their ears are like a bat's and stick up. Sholos have long necks and almond-shaped eyes. The hairless variety usually has bad teeth. Sholos can range in weight from 10 to 50 pounds. Like the poodle, Xoloitzcuintlis come in three sizes, standard, miniature, and toy. 
The standard measures 18 inches to 23 inches at the shoulder, while the miniature measures 14 inches to 18 inches tall. The smaller toy variety measures only 10 inches to 14 inches at the shoulder. The dogs are said to have a primitive temperament because they have not been bred over the years to have docile qualities. They are alert, intelligent, have high energy, and also have keen hunting and social instincts. Although they get along great with other dogs, Sholos may be very wary of unfamiliar humans and need to be socialized early if the dog owner has children in the family. They are also very clean and sometimes groom themselves like cats. Even the Sholos with fur have a hard time tolerating cold weather. The Sholo may also experience a great deal of sensitivity to loud noises. One of the most curious things about this dog breed might be its name. It has three different spellings and the word Xoloitzcuintli is often shortened to Xolo by non-Mexicans and Mexicans alike for ease of pronunciation. The word is from Nahuatl, the language of the Aztec Empire which still has over a million speakers today. Xoloitzcuintli is a combination of two words, Xolotl and Itzcuintli. Itzcuintli means dog in English and Xolotl was an Aztec god. It's important to look at the god Xolotl and what role the Xolotzcuintli played in ancient Mexican myths and legends. Archaeologists have long discovered dog remains and burials from commoners to the elites throughout ancient Mexico. Xolo bones have even been found underneath the Templo Mayor or main temple in the former Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, now the center of modern-day Mexico City. The ancients saw the Xolos as a bridge from this life to the next. In many cases, on the death of a family member, the survivors would sacrifice a dog that was close to the deceased and bury it along with him or her. The loyal dog of the earthly life would help its master travel to the afterlife, the Aztec underworld called Mictlan. The god Xolot is the main guide of all things to and through Mictlan, including the sun, whom he accompanies every day in a ceremonial daily death. The god Xolot is often represented as a dog-headed man or a skeleton. Sometimes ancient artists portrayed him as a hideous monster with feet going backwards. Xolot usually does not have eyes in his many artistic depictions. As the legends go, when a group of old gods sacrificed themselves to create a new world, the present world we are now in, the dog-headed Xolotl wept so much that he literally cried his eyes out. When crossing over to Mictlan, the newly dead must ford a very deep river. The dogs, along with Xolotl himself, help people navigate this dangerous waterway to cross over to their new lives. In the ancient Aztec belief system, the spirits of the dogs are recycled. According to the legends, the Xolotzquintlis, with patchy hair, the ones prone to win ugly dog competitions nowadays, are the dogs that have been reincarnated many times and have made the journey to the underworld often. The elites thus desired the patchy-haired dogs more than the sleek and completely hairless ones because these dogs had more experience with all things afterlife. The Aztecs were not the only culture in ancient Mexico to revere the Xoloitzcuintli. The Toltecs and the Maya and assorted smaller cultures in central Mexico also held the dog in high regard. Since the Maya had a written language, we can see a dog god like Xolotl existing a thousand years before the height of the Aztec Empire. In a famous bark paper book called the Dresden Codex, Ancient Maya artists depicted a dog god carrying a lightning bolt, and it is associated with death. He comes down from the shadows and shepherds souls to the next life, much like the Aztec god. In the Maya myths, the dog god is also responsible for giving fire to mankind, a sort of canine version of Prometheus. Sometimes, The dog god is referred to as Lightning Beast in classic Maya inscriptions. B. 
Beyond the meaning ascribed to Sholos in myths and legends, the dog served many practical and even some magical purposes in the daily lives of the people of ancient Mexico. Much of what we know about the role of Xolotzquintlis in the lives of the ancient Mesoamerican peoples comes from early Spanish accounts during colonial days immediately after the conquest. Spanish chroniclers describe the multiple uses of these dogs. Besides the usual garbage disposal and alarm roles that dogs still play in all Latin American countries to this day, Sholos were companions and used to hunt wild turkeys and deer. They were also used as a food source. Conquistador Hernán Cortés himself even described a lavish Aztec banquet in which young Xoloitzcuintli meat was a prized delicacy. The dog also had medicinal and mystical properties. Because of its high body temperature, Sholos were used as a sort of hot water bottle for the sick. The dogs were also believed to ease the pain of rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory diseases. On cold nights in the Mexican highlands, dogs usually slept with humans to keep the family warm. Some researchers who are more on the fringe have likened the dog representations of the ancient Mexican god Xolotl with the jackal-headed god Anubis of ancient Egypt. Does the similarity in canine gods suggest an ancient Mexico-ancient Egypt connection? The head of the god Anubis looks eerily like a Xolotzquintli, with its tall bat-like ears, thin neck, and longer snout. Some artistic representations of the gods Xolotl and Anubis are very hard to tell apart from one another. Like the Aztec god Xolotl, Anubis also served as a guide for souls to the underworld. In addition, Anubis judged a person at the time of death to see if he or she was worthy to make the journey. The god is also associated with embalming and cemeteries. Critics are quick to point out that canines have been companions to humans for millennia, and the fact that dogs accompany people as guides to the underworld in two cultures which supposedly had no contact with each other is just a coincidence. To those who want to believe, of course, there are no such things as coincidences or chance happenings. Some believe that these dog-god myths originated in the New World and were transported to ancient Egypt thousands of years ago from Mexico. For more information about ancient Mexico and the mother civilization of the Old World, please see Mexico Unexplained, episode number 110, The Lost Continent of Mu and the Mexican Mother Civilization. Some similarities aside, Notable differences exist between Xolot and Anubis that may derail the idea of ancient contact between these faraway civilizations. For now, Xolot and the Xolotzquintli will stand on their own and continue to serve as powerful symbols of Mexican pride and an enduring heritage. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the book, Mexico Unexplained, to get a hard copy of The Magic, The Mysteries, and The Miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank you and gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at MexicoUnexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.